Hala, thank you very much for coming. T tell me, Hala, who are you in terms of relevance to this discussion today? Um, I guess the relevance to this discussion might be some of my educational background. I'm trained in psychology and social work, and I've spent 20 years of my life working mostly in the not-for-profit sector and in various clinical settings. So prisons, drug and alcohol, gambling, family violence, men's behavior change programs, migrant and refugee community support. Um, yeah. That's 20 years in there. At least, yeah. Wow. wow, wow. <laughs> I'm much, much older than I look. <laughs> oh, <laughs> that's all right, that's all right. So uh, in which uh, areas were you like, uh, is it in Victoria? Were you in New South Wales? So I actually spent most of my life in Melbourne. I was born overseas in Lebanon and I migrated to Australia when I was nine years old and we migrated to Melbourne. So a lot of my career, my career started out there. I did spend some time, about four years working and living overseas as well and uh, currently live in Sydney. So for three years I've been living and working in Sydney as well and across Australia too. Beautiful. Yeah. Where did you work in overseas? Where did you work? In where? Overseas? Yeah, yeah. When or where? Oh, uh, where? Uh, so I spent a bit of time um, mostly in, in Lebanon, went okay. back, and, uh, and I taught English in Spain, and I lived and worked in Qatar as well. And that was my year of corporate, as I call it, where I did event management and marketing in Doha. Wow, wow. And in terms of you going around all these countries, how easy was you in terms of, um, you know, just getting along with acculturation? Look, uh, I think partly because being Lebanese, like we're in the middle of the world, everyone, we've had 17 empires in 12,000 years. So I think we're a very adaptive people to change. We speak multiple languages in Lebanon and then having migrated to Australia and I had to adapt here. I also really love languages and different cultures. So I, one of my biggest loves in life is traveling and being with the locals wherever I go and like, I tend to just blend in and be mistaken for for one of them. Like even even in countries you wouldn't expect, <laughs> <laughs> I become a sister. Wow, wow. Yeah. So I I had a great time doing that. I've never really struggled to integrate. Mm. Yeah. How many languages do you speak? I speak two fluently: Arabic and English, and I speak um, another four moderately. Wow. Which ones are the four? French, Italian, Greek, and Spanish. Oh my God. And so. starting to understand Portuguese as well now. Oh. Living in Sydney and <laughs> having the mix. <laughs> <laughs> so currently, professionally, um, which part of your work takes much of your time? So three years ago, I launched the Institute of Nonviolence and I'm doing that full time now. I'm the CEO and founder of that. And uh, it's very busy. It's at least one full time job. Uh, and that, yeah, that's what I do. We support family violence response across Australia and uh, a lot of focus on how to work with individuals who use violence and we do a lot of um, we do a lot of gender equity and anti-racism work as well okay you've worked with men uh, predominantly in your, in your career personally i've i worked in a maximum security male prison when i when i was starting out as a drug and alcohol clinician and when my, the first ever men's behavior change program i ran was in a maximum security male prison uh, but i've run men's behavior change programs across Victoria and New South Wales, deep correction settings and community settings. So yeah, I sort of work. For some reason, I work really well with men who use violence. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> but how tough was it working in the maximum prison, prisons? Uh, or to, easy, I would say. Yeah, look, I'm not going to lie. It's a very volatile environment and it's, it's confronting. But what, what I found most confronting was the violence towards the prisoners, really. Like, like being more, becoming more aware of how, how the system violates, how the system basically locks up fragile and vulnerable members of our community who often were children of the state. So I guess from, from early in their life, when, when the system got involved in their lives, it wasn't really a positive thing. And I felt like they were far more likely to end up in prison than others. There's, I do think there is a systemic bias in terms of who's chased by the police and who's locked up and how long their sentence is. Uh, so I don't think that's e equally distributed. Equitable. Those things became really confronting for me and it's actually why I left the prison. Uh, working with the prisoners themselves, I loved. Uh, I learned so much from them. It's, um, it's just one of those experiences that really helps you grow internally and gain perspective if you're open to it. 
Uh, and the other great struggle was working with the correction staff, unfortunately. Um, I didn't find their level of respect for women or for the prisoners was um, conducive to pr productivity or safety, really. That's sad. Mm. Wow. Okay. Mm. All right. For your current role, um, with Institute of Nonviolence, uh, in terms of diversity for people that you support, how diverse is that? Very. <laughs> oh. We work with everyone. We, we, so we offer clinical supervision for family violence specialists, therapeutic services for any individual aged 15 plus, and from any cultural background, including First Nations, um, any cultural background really, uh, like all the diversity is represented in Australia. We work with men and women and gender d diverse individuals, people with different sexual orientations. Uh, so we, we try to cater for everyone really, and you could be using or experiencing violence. Um, to access our services and we offer professional training as well for anyone who wants to understand family violence better or for the family violence sector to advance their skills in working with clients who are using or experiencing violence. Okay, beautiful. In terms of a career, what are the nuggets? Maybe tell me three big nuggets in your career. Oh gosh, what do you mean by nugget? Like the things like, that really hit, like this I really hit on top of the nail. Like this sorry, is great, yeah. I hit? Yeah, like, you, did, you did well. All right, three yeah. nuggets, gosh. Yeah. Well, launching the Institute has to be one. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I think carving, carving a space where I can be myself and I can say the things I think need to be said and I can create programs and design um, and structure the approach to family violence with colleagues in the sector, with other experts in ways believe, we believe are important and sometimes understated um, and and being you know sort of offering offering an insight into working with diverse communities and and being inclusive and demonstrating inclusivity by by our very makeup and our very action uh, so that that is a huge milestone I guess it's you know sort of you take a big leap in life to you know, self-fund your own business and put yourself out there. It's, it's not. It's a for-profit business, so I don't take government funding or anything. Basically, if if people think our work is valuable, they they access it. So it's it's mm -hmm. that's a huge one. Um, I think having a year of corporate work in Doha taught me a lot as well. Being in the social work space most of my life and not and being very community inclined. It was uh, very confronting on many levels. And again, I learned a lot. Um, yeah, I think, uh, I think the other gold nugget that I carry with me everywhere would be every individual that I've ever worked with that's touched me in a way and that I've learned so much from, you know, and that I've, I've grown so much as a person because of the work that I've done. And that's because of the vulnerability people have shared with me and the, the rawness and the honesty the way in which they share their lives and particularly their tribulations with me and inviting me into that. Uh, I, I honor that a lot and I think it's probably my greatest privilege. Beautiful, Hala, thank you very much. <laughs> thank you.